Hello and welcome to Vault Holocron. I'm Jonathan and today we will be discussing Saizi Tin. Saizi Tin was an Iktochi Jedi from the moon Iktoch. He is one of few Iktochi we know of at the moment in canon. He first appeared in The Phantom Menace and has also appeared in both of the following prequel movies, The Clone Wars and various other canon Star Wars media. Anyway, let's get into why Saizi Tin deserves more credit. First, I'm looking at an example of Saizi Tin's bravery. After the events of the Phantom Menace, the Republic actually managed to retrieve Darth Maul's ship, the Scimitar. The Republic intended to inspect this ship to see if they could learn about the Sith from it. At first, they sent technicians to inspect it, but while inspecting the Scimitar, its self-defense mechanisms went off, killing the technicians. This showed that the job was more dangerous than a simple inspection. This is when Saizi Tin got involved, being sent to secure the vessel where large amounts of spine equipment was found. Tin helping in the inspection of the Scimitar clearly shows his bravery, as the deaths of the technicians has shown that the job could have grave consequences, but Tin didn't let that get in the way, working hard without fear to get the job done and aid the Republic. This clearly shows courageousness, a very good trait for a Jedi Master to have, and a trait which gives him an advantage in battle. From this you can definitely see how Saizi Tin deserves more respect than he gets. Next I'm going to cover the first battle of Geonosis. This battle involved many Jedi, fighting off against the Confederacy of Independent Systems in brutal battle. The battle was actually so brutal that many Jedi died, being overwhelmed by the sheer amount of droids in the battle. This suggests that any Jedi who survived the battle must have been quite skilled to have lasted as long as they did. While Saizi Tin was one of these Jedi that survived, managing to live to fight in the Clone Wars. Clearly Saizi Tin was good in combat. Now I'm going to cover Saizi Tin's role in the Citadel Rescue. In the Clone Wars, Jedi Master Evan Peel, Tarkin, and his men learned some hyperspace coordinates which were so good that they could change the scale of the war. Due to the importance of the coordinates, the Separatists captured this group and kept them in the Citadel prison on Lola Sayu, where they were tortured. The Citadel was a particularly strong prison, having been made by the Jedi to be able to hold rogue Jedi. This meant that any attempt to break anyone out of it was very difficult. However, the Jedi decided to try to break Evan Peel, Tarkin and their men out of prison anyway. This attempt failed though, leading to the rescue team and to the initial prisoners all needing to be rescued at the rendezvous point. This is where a third group came in to get past the Separatist blockade and to the rendezvous point. Saizi Tin was one of the Jedi sent to rescue them, showing great commitment to the Republic and once again bravery. With the previous team having failed getting stuck on the planet, pursued by Separatist forces. Tin still flew in though, fighting the blockade, which wasn't easy, and getting an LAAT gunship through to the survivors on the planet. This was a very heroic thing to do, flying in despite the difficulty, showing just how good of a Jedi Saizi Tin was. This definitely shows that he deserves more credit. Next, I'm covering Saizi Tin's rank in the Jedi Order. Saizi Tin was a Jedi Master and he served on the Jedi Council. This is important as it required a good level of knowledge and power to become a Jedi Master. Therefore, any Jedi who had become a Jedi Master must have been quite a good Jedi. Also, this rank was clearly a great rank to get as a Jedi could only receive it if the Grand Master themselves saw the Jedi fit for the rank. But Saizi Tin wasn't just a master, he also sat on the Jedi Council, a group of 12 amazing Jedi Masters which governed the Jedi Order. With only 12 members on the Jedi Council at a time, it was no easy feat to become a council member. This shows that Saizi Tin must have been a very good Jedi to be one of the few Jedi that get to sit on the council. On top of this, he also managed to maintain the rank through all three prequel movies, 
which is quite impressive as well, bearing in mind that over the course of the prequels, the council had swapped out many members for various reasons. So before I mentioned how Sizey Tin being on the council suggests he is a good Jedi, well there is actually evidence for his skills in being a council member in the Clone Wars, supporting my previous statement of Tin being a good Jedi. In the Clone Wars, the Jedi aided the Mon Calamari on Mon Cala, but things went wrong ending up with the Mon Calamari army and the Republic almost being defeated and requiring reinforcements. However, the Republic didn't have time to train scuba troopers to aid the forces on Mon Cala, meaning that they would have to think fast and find another solution. This solution came from none other than Sizey Tin, who after Yoda recommended that they ask an ally of the Republic to help, suggested that they ask the Gungans. This was a very good suggestion, as they had an army, were friendly with the Republic, and were near to Mon Cala. This clearly demonstrates Tin's problem-solving skills, as he was able to come up with an effective solution to the problem in a short amount of time. Also, we know that his suggestion was good, as the introduction of the Gungan army into the battle actually helped the Mon Calamari and the Republic to win. If you've seen the Clone Wars, then I'm sure you remember the arc on Umbara. This arc was the one which featured Pong Krell, and showed us the gruelling Battle of Umbara. The Battle of Umbara was particularly difficult, due to the danger of the creatures native to the planet, and how advanced the Umbarans were. For example, the Umbaran militia used suits filled with a gas which gave them enhanced reflexes and aggression in battle. Anyone selected to fight in this battle must have been quite powerful in order to combat the challenges of the campaign. Well, Sizey Tin was actually one of the Jedi selected for this battle. Although we didn't get to see his efforts in the show, we know how hard for the fighting was, and therefore Tin deserves at least a little respect for his efforts in the Battle of Umbara. Finally, I'm going to cover Sizey Tin's final battle the fight against Palpatine. I must admit, this fight doesn't make Sizey Tin look very good, with him dying very quickly, but I'd actually say that this battle provides evidence to suggest that he deserves more credit. When we all look at this fight, we often forget just how brave the Jedi involved must have been to march down to Palpatine's office in an attempt to arrest him. In regards to the battle, none of the Jedi involved knew what to expect, with this fight being the first time the Jedi had fought Palpatine himself. In all previous battles between the Sith and the Jedi, the Jedi were merely fighting apprentices rather than the master behind the entire operation, meaning that they had no knowledge of what Darth Sidious was capable of. The Jedi were walking into the battle blind. Even then, not all Jedi had fought Sith apprentices. As far as we know at the moment, Sizey Tin didn't even have experience fighting a Sith of any sort, putting him at a massive disadvantage. Therefore, it was extremely courageous of him to join Windu in an attempt to arrest Palpatine, as he was walking into the hardest battle of his life without even knowing how capable his opponent was. Tin may have died in this fight, but we can't let this undermine the amazing bravery he had to even enter this fight in the first place. Therefore, Sizey Tin is surely worthy of admiration for his actions. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you respect Sizey Tin at least a little bit more now. And we hope to see you later at Volt Holocron.